Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video we have a meeting of the generation the Mate 30 Pro against the Mate 40 Pro and we want to take a look how far apart are the cameras in this one generation update. So let's get started. So we start with the Mate 30 Pro and a super wide angle or cine lens camera which has 40 megapixels and this is how it will look like when you're vlogging with a yeah, tripod that is like well, around 23 24 centimeters long and this is how it will look like when vlogging how's the stabilization stabilization how are uh, the co colors uh, the color signs dynamic range the sun is now shining directly onto my face this is why my eyes are a little bit closed and uh, yeah this is the mate 30 pro ultra wide angle what do you think about it and now let's take a look at the mate 40 pro and see how it's a new 20 megapixel ultra wide cine lens performs and now we are looking at the ultra wide cine lens of the mate 40 pro and how does this perform in comparison to the mate 30 pro it has a 20 megapixel sensor it is still the cine sensor it is still one over 1.54 inch sized sensor so basically the same sized sensor but has less megapixels with 20 so only half of the megapixel of the mate 30 pro how does this perform in terms of colors in terms of focusing in terms of stabilization just write it down in the comment section which one of those you think is better and also does this have a wider field of view it would be very interesting to know write it down in the comment section which one you think is better for vlogging in terms of ultra wide cine lens camera sensor now we are using the uh, big main sensor on the mate 40 pro and you can see a nice background blur behind me probably and also the sun behind me because this new uh, 50 megapixel sensor with a 1 over 1.28 inch sized sensor should perform pretty good also a new hdr algorithm has been implemented which allows you to use even more uh, dynamic range even in this backlit situations my face should be yeah relatively good exposed i can also turn to the sun and then you can see this glory of this sun uh, i have to have a cappy or something like this uh, a cap yeah, anyway, this is the uh, main sensor of the Mate 40 Pro. I think this is one of the highlights of the main um, Mate 40 Pro series. The main camera sensor, which has almost one inch size sensor, which is pretty, pretty awesome uh, for a smartphone. So now I'm filming with the Mate 30 Pro and its main sensor, which is a 1 over 1.7 size inch, uh, inch sized sensor this way around. Um, this one is um, nothing like unusual in flagships like the LG. Okay, LG granted is not there anymore, but LG Wing, for example, had one of those sensors. Uh, Sony has, of course, also the same size sensor. So it might be a very good compromise usually. And Huawei has perfectionized this with high dynamic range i'm not so sure if this has a higher dynamic range than the mate 40 pro i think the mate 40 pro is a little bit better but you can write down in the comment section what you think about this one here with uh, the background now and the sun in the back right now and uh, if i face to the sun let's do this sun burning uh, how's it now does it still look good i think the background blur is pretty nice face detection is pretty nice stabilization is nice everything is nice on the mate 30 pro so if you compare the mate 40 pro and the mate 30 pro is it a big step up in the game or is it just a little step towards a new generation with the mate 40 pro at least in terms of video the only thing that i noticed is the better or more background blur on the mate 40 pro which leads to a more cinematic view sometimes especially for vlogs but only when you're using the main camera lens and for this you have to extend the arm pretty far i have a nice selfie stick that has a nice reach as well and uh, yeah in terms of video so not much of a difference besides the main camera and the background blur what do you want to check right now are the photos and if you can see a difference there so let's get started here we see now 
on the left the Mate 40 Pro's pictures or photos and on the right the Mate 30 Pro's photos. What we can see directly on the first glance is a different color and contrast situation. On the left we have more natural colors on the Mate 40 and on the Mate 30 we have more boosted and more warm colors. When we zoom in you can see also a different. This looks a bit blurry. However, the Mate 30 Pro also did not capture everything super sharp, but you can see here this a little uh, flower or this little, I don't know how it's called, it's, it's already sharp and it gets like blurry down here. It's an automatic mode where it automatically figures out on what to focus. On the Mate 40 Pro I think it was focusing here on those, but you can see it has like a less uh, yeah, tolerance when it comes to sharpness. So it's like one thing is really sharp, the rest is unsharp because it has this big kind of sensor. And uh, yeah, both in this uh, overview look pretty good, but you can see also that the contrast is much punchier on the Mate 30 Pro. And this you can see almost in every photo. Let's take a look at the photo of those two. And here again, the Mate 30 Pro has more punchier colors. The greens are a lot warmer than they were in uh, reality. The reality you can see more on the Mate 40 Pro. And when we zoom in now to take a look at the details, you can see, wow, this looks pretty nice. This is pretty amazing for the Mate 30 Pro already. You can see the details of this flower. Uh, on the Mate 30 Pro and the bokeh looks really nice. But if I zoom in now on the Mate 40 Pro, you can see the difference in terms of sensor and resolution. Here you can see clearly it is even more sharp. The color is more correct because the flower was yellow and not orange. And you can see even more details uh, in the flower itself. The bokeh is also pretty nice and there's no difference there. And you can see even here a little bug uh, going up the flower. So the Mate 50 Pro, I think, nailed this shot pretty much and has the more realistic colors. Even though on first glance, I think the Mate 30 Pro with its punchier and warmer colors is something I tended to uh, yeah, prefer. But when I zoomed in, I noticed, wow, what a difference. The 10 megapixels more on the Mate 40 Pro really make. Those photos were all taken with the main camera and of course I try to get as close as possible to get the minimum focus distance but uh, more to this later. Then the next photo to show you first of all color rendition, high dynamic range, is there a difference? Both shot as you can see here in daylight the sun was coming from the left top and what you can see here is like almost the same colors in terms of uh, uh, in terms of sky and clouds, but a little bit overexposed here on the Mate 30 Pro, I would say. The clouds and here more refined on the Mate 40 Pro. And you can see also when I go down a little bit, there's more blue still here. And here it's getting more and more whitish and the colors are uh, the, the clouds are gone. And here you can still see the clouds clearly. So you can see more dynamic range on the Mate 40 Pro. But not only this, you can also see more details. Look at the grass here. You can see the individual grass um, halms. You don't see this here on the Mate 30 Pro where yeah, the resolution is almost the same, but there is a difference. We can see here we have 10 megapixels here and we have 12 megapixels here. So that's the difference. But in terms of details, I think also the sensor uh, is uh, with its 40, uh, 50 megapixels on the Mate 40 Pro is really uh, good. When we take a look at the train tracks, you can also see the sharpness is way better on the Mate 40 Pro here as well. Here it's like getting unsharp, here it is super, super sharp. In terms of colors, we can see when we look at the pavement here, it's again more warmish, yellowish kind of color and more bluish here. And uh, when it comes to realistic, what is more realistic? It was definitely the Mate 40 Pro and the Mate 30 Pro made everything a little bit too warm looking. Then the next photo is 
uh, test of the capabilities of the different cameras. We are testing here the ultra wide angle camera, the 40 megapixel ultra wide angle camera on the Mate 30 Pro. You can see it has more bluish punchy colors. Again, this little bit more warmish kind of colors and more artificial colors, I would say. And a little bit less dynamic range, I would say, if you take a look at this uh, Mercedes car here and compare it with the Mate 40 Pro. I think it is has a little bit more highlights there that are not uh, here. And another thing that you see here, sharpness, complete different. What we see in terms of, of angle is, uh, I think the Mate 30 Pro has a slight edge here, but it could be also that I angled it wrongly. But what we can see as well is when I zoom in at 100% and this sign, for example, here is the difference in uh, yeah, information that we have and resolution that we have because the technically the Mate 30 Pro should have more resolution because it has a 40 megapixel sensor but it is binding four pixels to one so we have 10 megapixel that comes out of here and on the Mate 40 Pro we have 20 megapixels it stays 20 megapixels I can show it to you here 19.9 so 20 megapixels and here 10 megapixels so you have double the resolution and you can clearly read the sign here without any issues and you have issues on the Mate 30 Pro. We can see also here like the cars and the lighting on the cars here is slightly overblown here completely readable more resolution less sharpening better colors so in terms of super wide angle cine lens I think the Mate 40 Pro made a huge step forward because those shots are wide but very very usable because of good resolution sharpness and colors this is now the main lens and do we see much of a difference of course in terms of color rendition again more punchy colors on the mate 30 pro and a more uh, realistic colors on the Mate 40 Pro. In terms of sharpness we can see here at the side a little bit unsharp and here on the Mate 40 Pro it is still maintaining the sharpness even on the side so a lot better. Uh, here you can see a lot better and the resolution in this case is uh, also only only two megapixels more on the Mate 40 Pro so it's not a big deal when it comes to this. Let's take a look at the sign here. Can we read the sign now? And let's uh, here take a look there. I think we can read the sign on both pretty much. Uh, again I think the Mate 40 Pro has the slight edge. It is getting a bit unsharp here on the Mate 30 Pro already but uh, yeah uh, you can also see this in this reflection of the window of the car window that there's more detail simply on the Mate 40 Pro. Let's go to the zoom lens, so the first zoom lens which is three times on the Mate 30 Pro and on the Mate 40 Pro we have five times zoom. We don't have third, three times zoom. We can of course slide out and it's then using the main sensor to, to crop in but this is not what we want to do. So what I did was uh, with the Mate 30 Pro first of all let's go and 100% everything clearly readable without any problems. The only thing that I see here is again with the colors a little bit more punchy. The blue is more bluish and the uh, the color here of this orange board is more orange and a little bit brighter on the uh, Mate 40 Pro and uh, Mate 40 Pro of course if I zoom in 100% you can see that it is uh, much uh, nearer because it's like the five time zoom. To make it fair and square I also did uh, here the five times zoom on the Mate 30 Pro and here an interesting thing effect because the, the five times zoom here is using a hybrid zoom. So it's using the three times zoom and then hybrid uh, zooming into the uh, cropping into the sensor a little bit and using some other information from other sensors as well. What we can see here clearly is that it is using some kind of, uh, yeah, again, punchy colors. You can see this here in this violet, I think it is, uh, color, not violet, it's pinkish color, is it? Uh, you, you can write down in the comment section how this color is called. But you can see here it is more, more bright, here is more dark. Uh, the same goes for the, for the blue, it's uh, uh, over sharpened a little bit, I would say. Here it is not so much sharpened and the, the color of the blue is lighter on the Mate 40 Pro 
when it comes to the colors here and uh, the only thing that you can see here is like you can see that it's a crop because it's a bit un unsharp on the Mate 30 Pro, Mate 40 Pro has it really really sharp and you can see more details there. In terms of colors I think it's a bit darkish and more uh, punchy on the Mate 30 Pro again. So let's go back two times. This is the uh, 10 times zoom is it? Should it be? I'm not sure. This is uh, the 10 times zoom. Sorry, this is the 10 times zoom on both. 10 times is a hybrid zoom on the Mate 40 Pro and on the Mate 30 Pro. It is uh, only five times as a hybrid zoom, and then after this, you have to uh, go in and punch the 10 times manually. So, what we can see here is again in terms of colors, more bluish colors in the sky and less bluish color, more into greenish going uh, on the Mate 40 Pro. Again, the same color rendition on the on the bottom, more light blue, or more light, uh, uh, what is a pinkish color, and the orange is darker again. And if you look at this 100%, interesting enough, I think the sharpening on the Mate 30 Pro made it a little bit sharper than on the Mate 40 Pro. But you be, ju be the judge on this one here. It is like um, almost the same at its maximum range of 10 times zooming. So now we come to the minimum focus distance and here you can see the difference. This is what I tried out and uh, what I figured out. You can see that with the Mate 30 Pro I can get a lot closer to the flower and have it still in focus as you can see here. Pretty nice. You can see all the de details here as well. And on the Mate 40 Pro I had to go a little bit uh, further away but because the Mate 40 Pro's main camera sensor has also two megapixels more, at least pixel binning, you know, 25, uh, to 52 to, to 12 megapixels you can get also pretty sharp results and if I compare it here it looks a little bit washed and, and, and the bokeh is creeping in already and you can see here that the hairs are already in the bokeh and here on the um, Mate 40 Pro because I had to step back a little bit I get more information I get sharper results I can see more details in the flower itself the hair and so on it's not getting to the to the to the bokeh yet and to the background blur and in terms of yeah who gets closer to the subject or the object in this case uh, you can see the mate 30 pro has the slight advantage you can get a little bit further away with the mate 40 pro and then take a nice shot as well then what I also did was like to compare you can also get more background blur and also pretty nice shot as it looks like here right now with the five times um, uh, optical zoom of the Mate 40 Pro. This looks also pretty nice and comparable I think even better because of more background blur. But this is the 100% view on the Mate 30 Pro. If I do 100% on the five times zoom you can see yeah this is uh, no, not so good. So it is, uh, yeah, it can be used in this way, but uh, if you go to 100% view, then uh, nope, not usable. So the next photo, just to see any difference in terms of um, autofocusing, what is it focusing on? Here, I decided to focus on the leaves here. Here, I think it decided to focus here in the background. So what you can uh, also see in this shot is um, that the the, the background blur, the bokeh in foreground and background is much more pronounced on the Mate 40, uh, 40 Pro because it has the 50 megapixel sensor with a larger uh, sensor size than the uh, Mate 30 Pro which uh, has a tiny bit smaller sensor. Then the next one we can see this as well. Here again color difference. The Mate 30 Pro made everything punchier, everything more yellowish. Uh, the Mate 40 Pro made everything more realistic. When we take a look at the upper uh, flower here, uh, you can see that it is more sharp on the Mate 30 Pro. So why is that the case? No, this is the case because I was not focusing on this, I was focusing down here and here you can see it's also sharp so there is a difference but here it's not so sharp but if I go down here you can see this is also sharp so the focusing worked and here you can see the difference because the depth of field uh, of the um, uh, Mate 40 Pro is the shallow depth of field is uh, more uh, uh, is less than on the uh, Mate 
uh, 30 Pro. So you get like, if you focus on this, then the, the other one, which is like slightly behind it, is slightly out of focus. And here with this uh, smaller sensor, when this is in focus, the other one is also nicely in focus. So you have to keep this in mind if you do some close-up shots, of course, with the main camera sensor. And this is almost everything. One last shot to show you again color difference and dynamic range on the Mate 40 Pro is better. What you can see here again, more punchy colors, especially in the grass here, it's greener than it actually was. And here it is less punchy, less green, uh, more to uh, close to reality. Then if I zoom in 100%, what we can see here is the cars, overblown highlights everywhere. If I zoom in here, you can see a much better rendition some overblown highlights as well, but it is a lot better than on the Mate 30 Pro where we can uh, see the color of the, the backlights of this car, for example, which is uh, here almost not visible at all. So you can see the dynamic range also in the sky. Let's zoom out and zoom in here on the sky. This is like overblown already. If I zoom in here, you can see it is green and you can see also the, the cloud there. So this is pretty good. And this is everything for this uh, photo comparison. You can write down in the comment section what you think, who made the better photos, what do you think, which looked better on first glance, the Mate 30 Pro with its warmer and more punchier colors, or the Mate 40 Pro, where they decided to uh, get a little bit cooler with the colors, more realistic with the colors. Um, you can write it down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, uh, that's everything for the photo comparison. Of course, you can also shoot some front-facing camera video action with the Mate 30 Pro. And this is what I'm using right now. And you don't have any option to zoom out or zoom in. Yeah, zoom in, probably you have the option. No, you don't have the option to zoom in, but you have AI HDR. So the sun is behind me again, well, maybe behind the clouds right now. But still, you have the option also to use this um, camera. And uh, let's see if it has autofocus. For Hold this in here. I think it is not focusing on this, so this has a fixed focus lens on the front. But I think it is okayish from the sharpness. If I'm holding it like this with my selfie stick, it should be uh, no difference. How about stabilization? Is it good enough or not? Just write it down in the comment section and let's compare it with the Mate 40 Pro. So, who do you think won? The Mate 30 Pro or the Mate 40 Pro? I'm pretty sure the Mate 40 Pro won in almost every category. The only thing where the Mate 30 Pro might have a lead is with the main camera having like a, the option to, to focus closer to objects, like getting macro shots done. But the Mate 40 Pro has a macro option where it just switches to the ultra wide angle lens, I think, uh, to record also or to take nice photos with uh, shallow depth of field of close-up subjects so this is the ultra wide angle on the uh, on yeah all the ultra wide angle on the front facing camera of the mate 40 pro i can also switch to 0.8 times and here you can see the gorilla pod that i'm using and if i go to the ultra wide native resolution this is how this will look like so you can see this is a pretty ultra wide angle camera where i can yeah also think of that because it's so ultra wide could be used for vlogging as well even does if it doesn't have autofocus as you can see here uh, good stabilization good dynamic range i uh, think this option is the same option or you can go with the conservative option which is this one which also looks pretty nice even if you don't get a nice background blur like on the main camera sensors that's everything for this video you can write down in the comment section what you think who is the winner here you can write it down in the comment section and that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye